I'm Scott Hall, sports information and broadcaster for Marshall Softball. The 2017 season was an incredible record-breaking year for MUSB. Whether it was individual or team, single game, season or career, winning streaks, awards and rankings, the season was filled with so many memorable moments. Well, add all that up and it comes out to a program record 42 wins. Now the journey to 42 covered 6,392 miles as the herd traveled to Florida, North Carolina, Georgia, Mississippi, Kentucky, Virginia, and Tennessee. Now they still played 16 games right here at Dodd-Hicks Field, their home stadium, which as you can see is getting a little bit of a facelift this summer, getting some work done. But still with all that road travel, all that mileage is enough to drive from right here in Huntington to San Francisco, back to Washington DC, and down to Miami. So a lot of travel for the team this year. But technically, the journey to 42 began on May 8, 2003. See, that's when the record-breaking MAC regular season champs won their 41st game with a 2-1 victory over Bowling Green. 14 years, or 5,126 days later, on May 20th, Marshall Softball made history with a 2-1 win over DePaul at the NCAA Regionals in Lexington. The journey to 42 was a long battle, full of tough wins and great moments. And it all started in Tallahassee, Florida at the Unconquered Invitational, hosted by the number three team in the country, the Florida State Seminoles. So join me as we take a look back at all the great moments, players and coaches, that made the journey to 42 so memorable. Good morning, everyone, and welcome down to sunny and a little bit cool for right now, Tallahassee, Florida. It is time for the 2017 softball season to open up for your Marshall Thundering Herd. They are on the field here at Joanne Graff Field for the Unconquered Invitational hosted by the Florida State Seminoles. The journey to 42 began with a 750 mile trip south to Tallahassee, Florida for the Unconquered Invitational. Marshall faced Lipscomb, Furman, and the third ranked team in the country, Florida State. But before worrying about the Seminoles, the Herd first took on Lipscomb. Senior pitcher Jordan Dixon began her quest for 1,000 strikeouts in dominating fashion, sending two back to the dugout in the first inning. 822 now in her career. However, Lipscomb got on the board first in the second. That one's lined over into the gap, goes skying over Zirkle's head. Triple A has to play it by the fence, she'll throw it back in, and DeVault has an RBI. Dixon responded, ending the inning with her fourth K. Jaeger goes down with the strikeout. Four strikeouts now in the game for Dixon. However, Lipscomb takes a 1-0 lead as we move on to the bottom of the second inning. The senior ace continued to keep it a one-run game, firing away at the Bison batters, striking out five more through the sixth. Swing and a miss. So Jordan Dixon picks up strikeout number nine here in the ball game. With Marshall running out of chances, a junior stepped up and delivered a message to future hurt opponents. Court will step back up, still an 0-2 count after three foul balls. Next pitch, this one's going to be line deep over in the left field. Look up and say goodbye. Taylor McCord, her second career home run, ties the ball game up at one. It was deja vu all over again as one year ago, McCord hit a solo home run to tie Alabama State at one in the seventh of the first game of 2016. The only difference in 2017, it came one inning earlier in the bottom of the sixth. Lipscomb had a chance in the seventh with a runner at third. Dixon, once again, shot it down. Next pitch from Dixon, swing and a miss. Peeler goes down on the strikeout, strikeout number 10 from Jordan Dixon, and it ends the threat. In the eighth, Lipscomb led off with a single, but the runner was quickly erased by the sniper. Outside McCord, guns it back to first. She is out, picked off at first base. Dixon and the Herd D finished off the Bison and put the ever-dangerous Alicia Durazio at the plate. Durazio reached on an infield single, stole second, and one out later was standing at third. Three pitches later, Durazio stole the hopes of the Bison. On the play, the Speedy Junior displayed the quickness and the instincts that would make her a record-breaking nightmare throughout the year. 
Every journey begins with one, and it was a hard-fought one for the herd. The second victory was another extra inning battle with the Furman Paladins. Freshman pitcher Kaylee Williamson, pitching under the moonlit night, started the game off with a highlight of her own. Looking for the next pitch from the freshman Williamson. Winds and delivers, swing and a miss. Kaylee Williamson strikes out her first batter in her first action. But the Paladins jumped on the first timer with a triple. And then quickly learned that no base was safe from the sniper. Court delivers the sign to Williamson, pitch delivered. Outside, snap throw down to third in time. Taylor McCord picks off her second runner of the season. Shea Braxton was right there, put down the tag on Candace Johnson. Now will end the threat and the inning. Furman grabbed an early 3-0 lead in the third. That brought ace Jordan Dixon back out to the circle. With bases loaded and one out, the Oklahoma flamethrower quickly sat down the next two batters to end the threat. Marshall started its comeback in the fourth as a familiar face led off the inning. Later, sophomore Hayden Ellis drove in that most important first run. Next pitch from DeMonte. This one's going to be ripped by Ellis down the left field line. McCord's going to round third. She is headed for home. Ellis is going to stop at first with an RBI single. Thundering Herd is on the board. 3-1 to one now is the score. Still a two-run game in the fifth. Dorazio kept the fire going, showing Furman she could fly. Just beats the throw. A great relay from Jacobs to Reynolds to win them at third, but Dorazio no hesitation going around the bases. Marshall tied the game at three after Shaylen Braxton and McCord both drove in a run. With Dixon and the defense in full control, the game moved on to the eighth, still tied at three. Sophomores Brianna Dice and Ellis got Marshall on top. First pitch, she's going to launch this one into right field. Going back is Candace Johnson. She can't make it there. Bounces off the wall. Dice rounds first. She's headed for second. Slides in safely. Just gets in front of the tag. Ellis digs back into the batter's box. Sophomore right-hander goes after the next one. She lifts this one off into left field. Will it make it over Cash's head? And it does. Drops by the wall. Dice rounds third. She's headed for home. A run comes in to score, and Ellis is safe at second with an RBI double. Thundering Herd take the lead 4-3 to three in the top of the eighth. The Herd had the lead for the first time, but with Ellis now standing at third and the best bunner on the team in Maddie Marshall at the plate, head coach Shauna Stanton called for the squeeze. 1-0 count. Next pitch. Bunt. Maddie Marshall lays it down. Coming in to score is Hayden Ellis. The insurance run was vital as Furman added a run to move within one in the bottom of the eighth. But Dixon vanquished the Paladins with two more strikeouts to end the game with two runners left on base. Dixon winds and delivers. Swing and a miss. Dixon gets the key strikeout right there for out number two in the inning. Fans making some noise. Swing and a miss. Dixon took some speed off and gets the strikeout for the final out of the night. Marshall ended the first day of 2017 in the same manner as the 2016 season with two eight-inning wins. Day two brought a tough contest in third-ranked Florida State. Marshall had a chance early as Dorazio again blazed a trail around the bases. Dorazio off and running. Then now she'll take off for third. She has two steals. The herd could not capitalize, and then in the bottom of the first, an All-American gave Florida State the lead. Dixon, next pitch. This one's launched off deep into right center field, going back to the fence, and Maddie Marshall watches it fly over. Jessica Warren with her third home run of the season. We're only in game three for the Seminoles. It stayed a one-run ball game as Dixon and the Herd D played flawlessly the rest of the way, including two major highlights. Cooper still at second. This one's lined up the middle. That one's going to drop in front of Estrada. She's going to come up firing for home. Is the throw going to make it in time? McCord makes the grab and the tag at home on Cooper. McCord fires down to Zirkle at second, gunned out. The sniper throws out Claveman at second. The timely hits did not come through for Marshall as seven hits were scattered throughout the contest. Despite the loss, Marshall showed it could compete with some of the best in the country. 
The Herd bounced back with a nightcap 6-4 win over Lipscomb. That put Marshall right back into another match with number three, Florida State. The final game of the weekend for the Herd was scoreless through three innings, mostly from great defensive play. Dixon gets the next sign on the 0-2 count. This one's lifted up in the air in center field. Triple A on the run, makes the diving catch. Morgan Zirkle and Matty Marshall provided offensive sparks, but it was not enough for the offense to catch fire. The Seminoles took the lead for good in the fourth on the way to a 7-0 win. Marshall finished the weekend 3-2. They showed the heart and the fight that helped carry them on the journey to 42.